This is by far the rarest camera I've ever bought. And it's also the largest and the heaviest. But interesting enough, it wasn't the most expensive, at least to me. And that's a cool story, which I'll share in a minute. But first, I wanna tell you about what this camera even is and what makes it so rare. This is the Mamiya ZD, and it was announced in 2004 and not released until 2006, and then really started shipping more even in 2007. And that's actually part of its demise. Only around 2,000 or less by all reports were ever produced. None were sold in the US. And that gap between when it was announced and when it was released meant that because the digital era was moving so quickly, when it was released, its specs were really not that impressive and it didn't make sense to pay the price tag. When this camera was released, it was over 12,000 US dollars. Although, like I said, never actually sold in the United States. As far as specs go, it sports a 22 megapixel CCD medium format sensor made by Dalsa, which is a lesser known camera sensor manufacturer, which seems to mostly focus on industrial products. I did some research to see how many other consumer professional cameras were made. Their sensors were made by Dalsa. And just like other camera sensors stuff, that's just really hard to track down. But it is one of the smaller ones, at least in the consumer kind of photography type camera. Although they do have a really cool website. They even have a cool article about CCD versus CMOS that I thought was pretty interesting that you should probably check out. Now I said the sensor size is medium format, but in case you didn't know, in digital terms, that can mean all sorts of different things, not just the ratio like it did in film days, but actually the physical size of the sensor as well. In this case, it's a 48 by 36 millimeter sensor, which is interesting because that puts it in the middle of the medium format gambit. It's larger than the Fujifilm GFX series of nowadays, and even larger than the Pentax 645D and 645Z just by a few millimeters but that makes it smaller than the Hasselblads and the phase ones, kind of those larger medium format sensor cameras. The camera itself is really interesting. and has some kind of cool and unique features that I want to show you right now. First off at the top, you have this rounded sort of LCD display screen, and this isn't really any different than other display screens, except I just really like that rounded look. So I thought I'd show that off. And while we're up here on the top, let me show you the, how the controls work on the camera because it is interesting. It does work a lot like a typical DSLR in a lot of ways. You have these dual uh, dials here on the back and on the front. You have a shutter button that is uh, not inspiring. It's a very squishy feel to it. And that is not the first or last of the build quality problems with this camera. So be on the lookout for that. Up at the top near the LCD, you have a mode button, which you press and hold and then rotate the dial to switch modes. And it's really not the best system at all because you basically have to grab the camera and shift from holding it to a different position to then change modes and then go back to shooting mode, which is just one of the reasons why you shouldn't handhold this camera like I do and shoot. It's really more of a tripod landscape or tripod studio, probably more like it kind of camera, but being that I am me, <laughs> I'm taking it out and just walking around with it, which um, I don't know, some of you are gonna make fun of me for doing that, but that's just the way I roll. I talked about the build quality problems. Probably the worst thing that I noticed and I really dislike is this CF card, SD card door latch thingy. It just doesn't work consistently. You unlatch this bit and it kind of unlatches in two parts. It never seems to wanna to go all of the way. It's all this plasticky feel to it. And then you pop it open and open. It is really the only plastic thing on this device, at least big plastic thing, and just feels really out of place for a $12,000 camera. I really was just expecting more there. And I expect that any day this could just rip off and be gone and I'd have to do some hacky repair to it. That is how it feels and then you kind of snap it back on. It also has a bunch of build materials around the body, which I think is really interesting. Uh, there seems like a lot of maybe aluminum that's just kind of painted over here. But then up in the front, I have some brassing just on this one plate. And I don't know, I don't know if that's real brass or something else, but. One particularly neat and even unique feature about this camera are these removable filters that Mamiya released at the time of launch. Now, they only ended up releasing two ever, but there was plans to make more if this camera system succeeded. There's an IR cut filter, and then I think the other one is some anti-aliasing type filter. And basically how this works is this is not the filter itself. This is the filter cartridge. You never actually end up seeing the filter because it has these protective dust cartridges. These little latches latch up right underneath the camera, and that allows the filter to be released or inserted into the camera. 
you kind of pull these tabs on the side and that inserts the filter into the camera. Or if I want to take the filter out, because right now it's in the camera, I reverse the process and then the filter ends up in this cartridge and you could swap to another filter. Now, the part that I'm really interested in is if I can get the camera to shoot somehow without a filter. By default, without a filter, it'll detect that and it will prevent you from firing the camera, which is really too bad because this would be a really cool kind of medium format, easy infrared hack if I could just shoot it without the IR cut filter. Um, and I think that's got to be possible. There's got to be some sensor in there that's not too hard to mimic or some way to put in another type of filter. I don't know. These cartridges go for about 20, 30, $50 on eBay, and I could maybe mock one up. Um, I'm just a little worried about <laughs> being too hacky in what is otherwise an expensive camera. Now let's talk about image quality because that's what I think a lot of you are going to be really interested in. How does this medium format early CCD sensor perform? Well, I do need more time. I've only had the camera for about a month and the shooting conditions have not been good. We just moved to Iowa and the weather has been rarely sunny and the conditions otherwise unpleasant to shoot in. Um, so I do want more time with the camera, but I will just say when the images hit, they really hit. And they don't ever really miss, like the bad ones are not really that bad. The colors are very natural, almost flat, a little on the flat side, but I think just trying to be natural and reproduce the colors they see without adding a bunch of warmth and contrast. <laughs> I know that's what I love sometimes when I shoot like my Pentax DSLRs or Canon DSLRs and I'm shooting it in JPEG only and that you get those really contrasty warm images. That's not what's happening here but of course you can tweak them in post. Now there's not a lot of dynamic range in this old sensor, so it really does struggle as you pull back shadows. And of course that's to be expected. It's a 2006 DSLR, a CCD sensor DSLR. And so if you put it in that frame of reference and that era of cameras, then it performs as you would expect, but just uh, don't get your hopes up too much just because it's medium format. The Mamiya ZD is Mamiya's only all together medium format camera. They made medium format backs for some of their film bodies that they produced. I think they still do that actually, but this is the only one they produced all together, but it uses the same mount. It's the 645 AF mount for Mamiya. And so right now I have the 55 millimeter F 2.8 lens and a 120 millimeter F4 macro, which is absolutely huge, especially when you open it up all the way to 1.1 one, one, uh, focusing. It's a huge heavy lens and that combo is a beast to carry around but really fun if you have any lens suggestions for me to add to this collection let me know but with those two lenses i feel pretty set actually maybe i should have led my video with this point with this caveat but you really should not buy this camera there's basically no one i would recommend this camera to and the reason being is the price normally normally the price on the used market nowadays is anywhere between twenty five hundred and four thousand dollars if you look at sold comps, there are a couple of ones out there that are cheaper. This one, and the reason I bought it, I would have really never paid that much for it. It's still tempting because it's such a rare, cool camera, but I would have never paid that much for it. But my copy, I got lucky and paid $800 with this lens. And that was because um, of some issues that the camera had. Um, none of those have actually come up. Actually, the listed issues have never come up. There is one issue and that's that the on off switch doesn't work. It's just always on. So I have to remove the batteries, but that's really not a big deal for an otherwise way steep discount on this camera. But even at that price, which was good enough for me as a kind of collector and camera geek to jump on the camera and show it to you all. But even at that price, you can buy something like a Pentax K1, a 2016 DSLR with a 36 megapixel full frame sensor and a wide gambit of vintage lenses you can put on it. Like you can have so much fun on that and the image quality is insanely better than this camera and I think really beautiful. But even if you want medium format, you would probably also be better off going with something like the Pentax 645D at around $1,500 to $2,000 also with mini lenses in that system. And that one even has a CCD sensor of 40 megapixel. So if you really wanted the medium format CCD look, that one is way more available and you get way more bang for your buck there. So just about any way you slice it, this camera doesn't make really any sense for anyone to buy but I love it and you're gonna see more of it here on this channel. Let me know what you wanna see me do with it or any suggestions like that. And uh, I'll just keep sharing my experience shooting with it and some more images from it. If you'd like to learn about this old rare digital camera, 
being revisited today, then you'll really like this video I made on the Minolta RD3000, which is another camera system that I'm really into right now. Check out that video. I'll see you over there. And until next time, happy snapping.